blessed of the Lord already. Look forward to continually <laughs> being blessed. And uh, it's going to be good to invite, invite my dear friend, Brother Israel Moran, to the pulpit area here to preach and to teach us from God's word. You're a blessing to me, brother. You really are. And truly a testimony Likewise. of the Lord Jesus. Likewise, I always get more to what I give. <clears throat> that is my blessing. And that is a lot of people a lot of times we don't we don't think about but there are many blessings that will take take us to heaven. Mm. You know, and this is one of them and the opportunity to share God's word, the opportunity to share in 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 life, so not only in the happy times but I mean, life in the trials and tribulations that happen to all, that are coming to all of us. Mm. Again, always is a blessing, always is a challenge for me to be able to come and um, seek to teach people who know everything <laughs> about the Bible. No. It's just like, Lord, and this is one of my comforts, um, but I fully, not just because it sounds spiritual, but just the, the, the blessing I have to be able to say, I don't have a message for you, the Lord gave me a message for us. Mm -hmm. um, it is not of me, I did not, e easily I could, could go back and through the archives, pull something out, I mean the usual Baptist preacher <laughs> type <laughs> deal, uh, but just waiting on the Lord and waiting on the Lord and waiting, and, and the Lord is good speaking to us in the, in the night watches yeah. putting things together for us so that we don't have to come with our own concoction but we just come with what he um, um, in his uh, humble voice um, allow us to understand there are times when we think God just doesn't speak to us times when uh, and when we just feel like he's just not with us uh, we feel pushed over, abandoned, because we see that other people seem like they got a corner on God's presence. You know, God's <laughs> with them, Jesus is not with me. I mean, we don't feel refreshed or encouraged by His word sometimes, even when we are in the church, in the midst of the congregation. Yeah. We cry and wonder, maybe, maybe my sin is just too great. I am too far gone in my betrayal. I haven't even noticed it. Those thoughts usually happen. These thoughts are not ours sometimes. He won't love me as much. But, but they come. They're not ours. But they come. He just has to put up with me. That one's often my brain. <laughs> he just has to put up with me because, <laughs> again, obviously we all have thoughts like that. We've all been there. We are... Uh, not quite doubting, but puffing. Because we understand who we are before. We are before the Almighty, the Bible calls him. The all powerful, all knowing. And yet, my circumstances, and your circumstances, and we have to, just like everyone else, wrestle with the thought of the sovereignty of God and the responsibility of men. Mm -hmm. I cannot just blame him for my mistakes, my errors, um, and yet he is sovereign, you know, to do what he willeth. There is, in, I believe, in Psalm 84, a thought that says, he withholdeth no good thing. So have you ever thought about mm -hmm. that good thing? We think of it materially, yeah, he's going to give me money. That's not what he's talking about, because <laughs> a, a lot of good things come out of discipline. A lot of good things come out of loneliness. A lot of good things come out of those times in which he's going to have to minister to us. And so, because there are those times when we're puzzled in which the flesh is going to fail us. Our, emotion, our emotions will bear our soul. And how can we withstand by the grace of God and by the grace of, the, of his Holy Spirit? My, my prayer is that you may hear his voice this day. You go with me to Hebrews 11. 
Hebrews 11, I usually try to be expositional as much as possible. Um, but when it is not my message, I don't have any choice in it. When it is given to me, when when I minister the, 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 the counsel of the Lord, I must follow that. But yes. in Hebrews 11, 22, I want to read that verse in 11, 22. Because as you you all know, and we haven't even thought about it, but I'm sure if you have been in any Baptist church, you have heard that Hebrews 11 is the hall of faith of the dead son. And that's always caught my attention and thought about it. Because it is not the hall of faith of the saints, it is the hall of faithfulness of God. Mm-hmm. It just depends, you know, we just think a lot, you know, like we can do these great things. We just have a lot of faith. You know, that's just the problem. We just don't have enough faith. Just like just like the Pentecostals. You don't get no faith, that's why you ain't healed. It just yeah. does go that route. If we view it this way, you know, because it's not about the whole of fame of the saints, it's about the whole of fame of God. Anyway, you are familiar with this account by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith all these men but in verse 22 we, we, we catch this one by faith Joseph when he died made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones by faith Joseph and so today we are going to and obviously we're going to key on, on this character and in this character we have the life of Joseph obviously that's Genesis, then in Hebrews, but there, is, but there is a thought here, and to preach the whole counsel of God, we have to pull the whole thing together. Uh, they're not just separate things, it's just one thought that is going to be conveyed here. And so we think of Joseph, and there's not much, nothing that I can think of negative spoken of Joseph, um, you know, uh, as far as what the scripture tells us. But we know that Joseph went through a lot of stuff through a lot of things that make my trials very, very little to me, okay? Not to the Lord, because He understands each of us, our trials, properly, not like we understand them. And so, and the Bible tells us that by faith is Joseph. So this is something that, that we can see that Joseph have uh, been practicing in his life, faith. When he died, he made mention of the departing of the children of Israel. He knew Obviously, that was, that we can say probably, let's just throw it, 400 years later when they're coming out. So he has this foresight, this insight, based on what? That would be the question. The easy, the easy, easy thing would say would be, well, God told me. That would be. But we're going to dig a little bit deeper. And then he says, and gave commandments concerning his bones. His bones. We know he's not going to be there. He's in heaven. But yet he's got these things about his bones. So we're going to see about that. Because a lot of times we just read it and we just hear, okay, by faith, Joseph. But how about the rest of it? What does that mean? Because that's the full thought. Our full thought. And we could go in as many verses as this chapter has and go into each of these characters and, 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 impl- and see the fullness of what is being spoken here. But I'm just going to key on one. And if we need a title today for what we're going to see or, or a focus that one would be, and I'm going to this all preachers, long titles, <laughs> would be the theology of God's faithfulness. The theology of God's faithfulness. Because that's too complicated. Okay? The Lord was with Joseph. That would be the simple one. But it is the theology of God's faithfulness that we're going to see. And if you don't mind, you allow me to come to the Lord before I start uh, running my mouth. Will be a blessing. Dear Lord, we thank you for, for thy goodness and your kindness. But I can stand here and say this is not my message, but this is a message that you have given for us. Bread that you have broken with thy hands for us. Because no little gathering is little when you are in it. And I'm thankful that you see me and that you see us. We see ourselves so unworthy of the true bread. Mm. But to know that you provided it. 
and that thought itself just crumbles my heart just to know that you will reach extend your hand to provide me some of these masks I thank you and now I pray that Lord that take all things away from our minds so that we can truly be here not just in body but in our all emotional being and all spiritual being all that we are the new man in Christ may be arrested by thy word be on it and Lord my motives filter my motives for teaching for speaking for doing to the honor of Christ is in you Amen. there's one thing you know we can see here it's that we must rethink what God's faithfulness looks like. That is the emphasis, God's faithfulness. What does that look like? And that's what I'm saying. We must rethink because the popular idea is very different to what the Bible presents. Because usually a lot of people, you know, and they, you know, we sing uh, uh, um, uh, one of my favorite songs, which I cannot bring to mind right now. About God's faithfulness, um, great, is faithfulness. great is thy faithfulness. And, and but when we're singing it, sometimes we're just thinking about the family, and we have a car and a house, and you know, we got some money in the bank, and there's a good job, and there's benefits, and everything's going great in the home, the family's functioning right, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, we are never in a pickle, yeah. No, there's no adversity. We haven't had to do U-turns. Um, we think of a lot of times God's faithfulness as having a lucky day. I didn't, I didn't have to cry that day. I didn't have any pains that day. It was only gain. You know, success mm -hmm. idea, the plethora. That's what we think of. When we think of God's faithfulness. You know, very this way. Very on, only the positives of life this way. Because if there are problems and there are ongoing trials and tribulations, if one problem follows a bigger one, um, if things are just so bad, I just want to call it quits. This is it. Just can't take it anymore. Then we think, well, God is not with me. And we're not saying that he's not faithful, but that's what we're saying. Mm -hmm. I know I'm very guilty of that. Therefore, we know that God is faithful. That's head knowledge. But how does that look like? How can I see that in my life? I need heart knowledge. I need experiential, practical living of, the, of, of, of doctrine, of sound doctrine, of theology. So God is faithful. How do I see that? Simple. I don't want to confuse anyone. Theology. I like that word. I don't know why I like it. Probably because of the meaning. Theo means God. Logic means study of. So this is the study of God. And it's the study of his character. Who he is. And we are looking at theology. I could have not used that word. Because you know. You got to feed the children. But I choose that. I'm not afraid of it. A lot of people today are very anti-theology. They don't want to even use the word. Because they're afraid of it. For some reason. But. It is not a bad word. It's a good word because it's the study of God. And if people would study God's character, there would be a lot better sound theology out there. And one of, and, and the, and the, and one of the characteristics of the character or the essence of God is that he's faithful. And we easily are able to amend that. But what does that look like? How can I identify that without having to get an expected check and say God is faithful? that's why we see it and so this is nothing we haven't heard but if we haven't seen it in the scriptures how can we see it in our lives so my aim today or the aim of the Lord was to help me see a clear picture and, and, and we will find a clear picture of it, although there are many many pictures of this the theology of God's faithfulness his faithfulness if we meditate and take it slow and chew on it for a long time, we come to a, an understanding that this is a terrible truth. Because in that truth, I discover that I am unfaithful. 
Mm-hmm. He is faithful. We are not. And therefore, I, you know, uh, speaking of our own unfaithfulness to God, it's enough to acknowledge ourselves guilty and to judge ourselves of not deserving even the least of his mercies. As Jacob said in Genesis 32, 10, I am not worthy of the least of, thy, of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. We don't even deserve to know his word. You know, forget about the rest of it. Just to know his word. Just to have a, 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 a part of the scripture. Yet we are crowned with mercies all day long. Even in our sleep, we are crowned with mercy. Yeah. Why? Because he is faithful. Because his faithfulness is according to his character. It is not according to ours. If it was according to my character, I would get in, I would have no mercies. Mm. You know, because we'll be dependent on whether I do right. Yeah. And I often and I know that I don't do right. You know, and so it is very important for us to understand what we're talking about, where we are. Obviously, God is faithful. We can see that in Deuteronomy 7 9. Deuteronomy 7 9. Um, we see Moses is speaking. He knew. In 7 9, he says, <clears throat> Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God. And that statement is in, in contrast to the uh, pantheon of gods that were out there. And so he said that he's saying he is the faithful God, which keepeth the covenant of mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Amen. Psalm 119, 75. And a lot of people talk about the Lord's faithfulness. I always I, I always think about they know if they know about this one. 119, the longest psalm, verse 75. 75. 119, 75. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. Mm -hmm. We don't I don't like that one. <laughs> I doubt anyone of us is gonna like that one. Because there are according to this, what the, the insight that the psalmist has here, the Lord is so faithful, he has to afflict us. He has to do it. He has to do it. And so it's very important. That is a, a hard one to, to follow. But at the same time, it is true. It is um, insight in his character. In 1 Corinthians 1.9 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 verse 9 we see this. God is faithful. So this is not only Old Testament. Not only Moses said it, not only the psalmist said it, uh, Paul said it. God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. In chapter 10 verse 13, we have that, we have more of that. 10 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such is common to men, but God is faithful, mm -hmm. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able that will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. This verse bears my soul because it tells me also that when I give to temptation means that there was a way out given and I took it not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking about the depravity of the heart, yes. the deceitfulness of the heart, this gets even more um, pronounced in, mm -hmm. in the counsel of God in chapter Revelations 3.14. Revelations 3.14. This verse is also very important. We see that Moses said it. We see that Psalmist said it. We see that Paul said it. I'm sure there are many others, but I'm not going to go through the whole scriptures, every verse. But I'm just making the emphasis in Revelations 3.14. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, of the Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. What is one more, more important than this? That, that John is quoting the Lord himself. 
the Lord himself, I am the faithful. And so, you know, one thing is Moses said it. Another thing that some said it. Another thing is that Paul said it. Now, this is the Lord himself saying it. Mm-hmm. And, he can, and he cannot lie. You know, so there is just more weight on this. Revelations 19.11. Revelations 19.11. These all verses are fresh in my, my brain. That's why I'm using them. 19.11 says this. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and righteousness. He, he does judge and make war. War. That's 19.11. Revelations 19.11. In there, John is saying what he's seen in the vision. And he sees the rider on a white horse and says his name is Faithful and True. In 1913, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Talking about faithful and true. And so, we see in the scriptures, and like again, this is the brainer. We all know that God is faithful. But what, I'm, but, but I believe the Lord is trying to get us to understand is how we bring this head knowledge so that we can have a clear picture, so that we can ha- see this in our daily lives, see Him, faith is faithfulness to us. And so the theology of God's faithfulness is knowing His character, not in contrast to our character, because there's a huge chasm. You know, there's obviously nothing can match that. But knowing that as a father. Even when that little child soil himself again as little children, the good father won't leave him that way. The father won't let him play near the danger, even if he deserves to fall in danger. The baby is not out of his dog's thoughts at all, but shower with constant care. The child does not see or is able to comprehend all that his father has prepared for the next days ahead, yet the Father is working ahead, preparing what He had planned, purposing according to His power. The Father caring for His child. That, in in my brain, so in a lot of scriptures, it solves a lot of conundrums when I understand that I am a little child, and that's why the Lord Jesus says, "He is Thy Father." Address Him as a Father in the Lord's Prayer. So even, even in the times of trial, the moment we go into the lion's den, how long he leaves us in the fiery furnaces of our lives, the moment he lead, leads us out of the ashes and sackcloth, we know that judge of all the earth will do right. Yes. How, do, how, how do we know this? The Lord Jesus says, Matthew 7, 11, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Mm-hmm. The Lord has taught me a lot, of, a lot of good lessons through my dad. Although my dad doesn't know the Lord, but I see him, how it is in him to give me good things, good gifts. My dad, unsaved, how much more my father which is in heaven, you know? And, and so, a lot of times, now, here's where we come to where we are. That in Matthew 7, 11, he says, how much more, uh, uh, more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? And we, inwardly, we know. We have asked. I know this verse. You know this verse. We have asked. We have asked for the Lord to save a family, loved one, to do something in the life of somebody, to help us in ministry. We have asked. So why did why didn't God respond? This is this is the key. This is why we must have not only the concept, but a clear picture of, of God's faithfulness. He, does, he doesn't, uh, who doesn't know about God being faithful? Everybody knows. Every Armenian church knows about that. And so the, the, the point here is, 
yet how often we struggle in questioning him and doubting him and, and trusting him. And I believe we will all agree more than often. It's just a constant battle, it's just just all the time there. When we are alone in our thoughts, the Lord will bear us, will crack us open in a way. So what do we need? I, uh, and this is what, what helped me. We need a clear picture of God's faithfulness in the Bible. Because we can go to many verses. But we want to see a picture. Because once I see this picture in the scriptures and I learn from it, I will be able to see that in my life. That is the, 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 the importance uh, of, of this and of understanding this teaching. And so the Lord shared a lovely picture uh, of who he is in the scriptures to some of his servants. Um, also, this picture has helped me in times of distress and duress, among many examples. Um, this is something very dear to me that I often go back in, in my heart. Uh, it helps me in the struggle to see his faithfulness. In Hebrews 11:22, we, we saw that by faith, Joseph. By faith, Joseph. Uh, we know in Genesis, uh, Joseph is known, or is called of his brothers. Here, cometh the dreamer. <laughs> Very yeah. despiteful term, the dreamer. Here cometh the dreamer. And in Hebrews eleven twenty two, when he's he's saying, you know, uh, you guys are gonna go out one day. Uh, take my bones with you. You know, who cares? hundred years later you know who cares mm -hmm. you know that and those are his last dying words if you go back to Genesis you know so this has got to be very important especially in the Hebrew culture very important those lying, dying words but Joseph kept dreaming even beyond the grave we have this picture in Acts 7 9 if you go see that there in Stephen's in Acts 7, 9, Stephen's um, message to Caleb's Pharisees. In 7, 9, he says this, And the patriarchs, moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. We were talking about prepositions earlier. But God was with him. He said the patriarchs, his very brethren sold them into as a slave in, uh, to Egypt, but God was with them. Where was God? God was with him. Well, he was everywhere, but especially he was with them. It's very important uh, that we see that there was a reason why Stephen was bringing this out at that moment. God's uh, when when we see that God was with him, we can usually say God's presence. He was with them was presently with them and, and in a simple picture it is the same as saying God's faithfulness because yes sometimes what I think important that I need I don't get but I also see that he is with me I also see him that he hears me but I'm still in the same circumstances mm -hmm. I'm still in the same struggles and I'm still weeping At the same time, I know he's speaking to me. Sometimes I just feel like I'm so far away in my betrothal and sin that he's not around. But the next moment, I look and the Lord says, all the trees are starting to change. Mm -hmm. and, the ch and the colors of the trees are very beautiful. Change can be very beautiful. Out of something like this, it just struck my heart like that. And that wasn't me. I am cada poetic. But because I see him with me, I see his faithfulness. When we fall in the holes of despair, how do we get out? Well, we cannot get out. Well, I know we, we think we got out, but we don't. We will be pulled out by the Holy Spirit, yes. Only if we meditate on his character, the character of God. Because the Bible tells us about this. Joseph did not have an unlucky day. Psalm 105, 17. Psalm 105, 17. 
I don't know if you are like me, but everything that happens in my life is a reason. It is cause. Mm -hmm. And I know the one that caused it to happen. I know why it happened. It was planned. It was orchestrated. It was in, in, the, in, in the calendar, scheduled in the appointment book. Mm -hmm. yep. Psalm 105, 17. He sent a man before them, even Joseph was sold for a servant. Joseph did not have an unlucky day. He just got out on the with the wrong foot. Is that what they say? Mm -hmm. He slept on the wrong side of the bed. <laughs> no, God sent him. What a way to send somebody. You know, Jonah probably said, next time I just, I just let God pay for the fare. You know? But Joseph was sent. That's what the scripture says there. Yeah. It was, uh, and then on Psalm 80 verse 1, Psalm 80 verse 1, if you see that one, that one tells us quite special concerning Joseph. Some insight on that. 80 verse 1, Psalm 80 verse 1. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. Thou that dwellest between the cherubim shine forth in light. The shepherd of Israel led Joseph as he was as if he was shepherding Joseph through all those trials. Because yes, in the story of of Joseph on his account, we don't see the statement where he says God was faithful to him, but you do see that he says that the Lord God was with him. God was with him. The Bible says there, <clears throat> the things that Joseph went through were not because of a bad luck, but because of God. He uh, led him through all those things to show his faithfulness. The question is, his faithfulness to Joseph? Or his faithfulness to himself. There you go. Now, because you gotta put yourself in the spot of Joseph. I have to put myself in the spot of Joseph. Because the Lord is not just trying to lead me through muddy water just because there's no other way to go. He's the Almighty. If there is no way to go, He'll make a way. He'll just open the Red Sea again. He'll just make a way. It's not hard. There's nothing hard for the Almighty. You don't need to reschedule anything. You know? And so therefore, we have to understand, he's trying to teach us something. He's trying to teach us that he is faithful, but based on himself, his word, faithful to himself. And, and that statement birth, births in our souls, peace, births, hope, uh, birth, uh, love. Because when he, lead, we, where, when he sends, he leads. It's very important. Joseph was sent. He was led through all that happened. Joseph is just the picture. I mean, and we can say, yes, it's a, a, a picture of Christ and, and all of those things, and it's important, but, but I learned a lot about Joseph because it is my father leading me and sending me through the difficulties and trials and things that happen in my life, and I'm just walking in them. Mm -hmm. I'm a little babe. I'm a little child before the Lord himself, before the Father. So the Lord was with Joseph. We know the, the, the account. Yet the Lord didn't take him out of jail, take him out of the problem, did not take him out of the difficulties, did not take him out of the trials, nor out of the adversities. And Joseph was not hustling God either. He was not trying to just get something out of him. That's, that is an amazing thing. Sometimes I do, sometimes we do. And so... We're going to hustle the Lord. Yet, if God was with Joseph, why didn't God take him out? Jail. Why didn't take him out? Why didn't prevent him from such a evil woman at Potiphar's house? Why not? Who put him in, in, in Israel, on Jacob's heart, to like this one better than the 11. Where did he get the thought of giving him a robe of many colors? Who 
Tu puta there. Did he just have a great idea one day and says, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put all my children against this one. So we, we and there's a lot of parenting uh, we can learn from, from Jacob. Favoritism and all these things. That is, we, this is not the, the point for that. But there is, you know, we, we, we have to understand there is one that is causing these things. Remember Job. Somebody caused things for Job. He didn't just slept on the wrong side of the bed that day. Therefore, we got to just continue seeing what is going on. There was a lesson. There was a plan at work. There was a mighty hand, an invisible hand. First we see Joseph as a young man with many dreams. Mm. Some people say he had no character. I would disagree with that. There's some character in it. But even as an old man, we see Joseph with character. And at the beginning, when he's a young man, he had many dreams. At the end of life, he only had one. And when he died, don't leave me here. Don't leave me in Egypt. Take me with you. I want to go home. This world is not my home. Mm -hmm. I'm just passing through. Don't leave me here. Yeah. You just had a dream. But you only have that by faith. Mm -hmm. You only have that by faith. And that's something that the Lord kept working in us. We see in this groaning. A lot of times I, 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 I experience this groaning myself. That I'm being prepared. Through all these difficulties, I'm being prepared yes. for heaven. Not for this world. Not so that I can be happy. Very important. We come to the Bible a lot of times as believers because we want to be happy and this is a way to be happy. And that is a reason. And that is, it, it is a naive way. Yes. We all pass through it. But I don't come because I just want to be happy. I want to go home. I want to be with my father. I don't like change. And I don't want to be around it. There's amazing things I'm learning about the millennium and the reason for it, and all these things, that even with a perfect environment, people are going to sin and die. Yes. At the end, they're going to show Satan when he's released. Even in a perfect environment, where Christ is king, and everything is righteousness, and judgment, you know, and in, in, in purity, there's still people are going to go their way. We now say, well, Satan made me do it. And I'm not going to be able to say that, <laughs> because he's going to be someplace else. Let's go to Genesis 39. If you don't mind um, following the scriptures in this place in Genesis 39. I'm excited, pretty soon I'll be coming back to Genesis. Genesis 39. Verse 1 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and, uh, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites which had brought him down thither and the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian three points and a pun as they, someone would say but the first thing we want to notice propositions again the first proposition once uh, uh, Joseph is sold as a slave gets to Egypt put in the slave market the trade market at that day and the first thing that happens is verse 2 and and the Lord was with Joseph uh, very important through all the things that happen in our life that we can say and the Lord was is the life of Joseph was marked by problems seeming unfairness uh, now, when we study this, the life of Joseph, we don't find your your uh, your best life now type of mentality either. Many wish uh, Joseph evil, but God turned it for good. Did Joseph see it? The question will be, a lot of times we question whether he saw it or not. The question is, do we see it? Do we see that God turns evil for good in our lives? Mm. 
So we see that, that the one that is sending us through these trials and difficulties is the one shepherding us through them as well. It's very important. Joseph was hated by his brothers, thrown into a pit, sold and resold as a slave, in Genesis 37, 28, and 36. As a slave, he was made to work in Egypt and, wore and, and was lied about and accused and singled out by Potiphar's wife. He was put in jail again, was made to work for others in jail. Then he was forgotten in jail for two years. In Genesis 39, 20, he translated a dream. Is that what he said, translated? Or gave the meaning of a dream. Interpreted. And then he says, remember me. Hmm. And then he didn't remember him for two years mm -hmm. until something had to happen. And the Lord was with Joseph. Through all the negative events, God was there, faithful to himself. God has a reputation, you know, to be faithful. Not because of us, because of his great name, because of himself, faithful to himself. Not just, now we uh, have this bright, shining manifestation of his faithfulness that we uh, enjoy. But the Lord is faithful to himself. Joseph. So the Lord's faithfulness in, in that statement. And the Lord was with Joseph. That's what the narrator tells us. And the Lord, yeah, these things were happening. And the Lord was with Joseph. Another one happened in 3921. In 3921, verse 21, it says here in the same chapter, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The first one was, and, jo and the Lord was with Joseph. This one is, but the Lord was with Joseph. I like prepositions. Prepositions are good. Joseph got along without going along with the world. Because he was in the world at that moment, Egypt. Um, what about his dreams? Or his trust in God's character? Instead of Joseph throwing a pity party, he knew his dreams meant something. He knew those dreams he had meant something. I do not know if he, when he saw them, how it happened. I'm not going to say that he was just singing all the time in jail. I don't think he did. But one thing I know that he was not angry at God. He was not murmuring and complaining about his brothers, his family. He was not murmuring and complaining about God, but what the things that God has sent him, led him, shepherd him through, through all the events in, uh, in life, Joseph was focused on God. He saw that he was with them. He got gained favor with, in prison. So he got first favor with Potiphar, put him over everything in his household. Then in prison, he gained favor with the keeper of the prison, put him in, in charge of, all, of everything in there. He saw God was present. God showed his mercy. Because just like you and me, Joseph was the same flesh as you and me. And there are times. He just wanted to scream. <laughs> he just wanted, ah! You know, because he just was just like us. I don't think he was a superhero in any other regard. Um, he just wept. How do you want? Sign them. There's just sometimes just no way to go. Yeah. And sometimes I just groan about it. <laughs> There's just nowhere else to go. Sometimes I just wonder about it. <laughs> but that's the times, as painful as they are, when I know he's there. Because I, I, I find comfort. In all circumstances of life, when others men wrong, God intervened for, for good not stopping the wrong, but making the wrong work for our good. Because he's good. The Lord And the Lord was with Joseph. That is one thing. When things are just rushing in, just happening. Another thing is while we are in those circumstances, but the Lord was with Joseph. And sometimes I don't have the answer. I want, you know, I mean, he's almighty and powerful. Why do you just 
snap of the finger. You know, it's a wrestling. And I never win that one. I never out wrestle the Lord. But in my flesh, sometimes we do it. Or I do it. So I'm breaking a sweat or anything. <laughs> because the Lord was with Joseph. In verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not at anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Amen. Now, what is prosperity? We can go materialistically or spiritually. Materialistically, you know, we just become Pentecostals and go all out on the prosperity gospel. Spiritually, uh, his soul was made of prosper. He was prosperous of soul. He saw more than, than just an outcome. He saw so much more. So we have to notice the emphasis. It is not on what Joseph did, but on what the Lord did. Not about Joseph's successful jail ministry, but what the Lord did in the life of Joseph, the dreamer. There have been times where it just, and I remember this one, it's particularly dear to me. I don't know if it is positive or not, but it's just part of my life. When I would talk to the Lord in, 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 in groanings, but at the same time there was hope. And I didn't want to have hope anymore. Mm. And I remember that so well. And I realized that he was trying to teach me something. He was trying to help me see. But I did not want to see it because the flesh don't want to see it. We have to struggle and wrestle against the flesh. And so Joseph was trusted by men. And he just kept trusting God. His faith was real. And others saw that God prospered Joseph in jail. Gave him wisdom, peace, hope. Yet kept him in there. And that's the struggle. The question is, why did he keep him in there? And this is where a lot of people, a lot of believers, in a way, turn away from God in their hearts. They may still go to church. They may still go because it's something they're Christian. But they just, and I know because I've been there. I just go and I'm not there. And that is because there are times where we just, Turn away because God, I mean, we think, let me read how I put it here. Many turn away from God because they don't see that God can turn wrongs into good. Sometimes we just don't see that because we don't, because we want it to happen now. You know, in jail, Joseph met one of the closest men to Pharaoh. What a coincidence. Genesis 40, verse 1, 2, 3. He met the chief butler. What a coincidence. Man. Joseph gets to meet the chief of butlers, the one also the, uh, the wine taster of Pharaoh. It was a divine appointment arranged by God himself. How is that? God gave him uh, dreams to Joseph. But he also gave dreams to the baker and to the chief butler. So there was no coincidence. They just were there. They just happened to be there. And they were dreaming something. You know, it's a heavy dinner or something like that. It is no coincidence what happened in Genesis 40, verse 23. There was no coincidence either. In 23 says, Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. That's no coincidence that Joseph spent other two years because the butler forgot. When did the butler remember? When it came to pass, 41 1, at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, stood by the river. He says, I'm going to make you remember. I'm going to give a dream to this guy. And he's going to come and say, I'm going to chop everybody's head off who don't tell me. And then the guy says, oh, I remember. <laughs> I know who can help you because I was going to get my, my head chopped off too. And someone helped me with my dream. Very important. You know, very, very important what's going on in here. It was of the Lord. The Lord knew when the appointment time was due. When 
not when Joseph wanted it, but when God wanted it, the appointed time. He was not ready for the change, not ready for, for the top, not ready. He needed to spend another two years. Of what? Of seeing that God was with him. That's what it what happened. That's what happened. And I'm not I'm not preaching with my brains either. I'm preaching with my heart. I'm preaching to myself. I'm venting, <laughs> if you want to call it that way. I'm just venting. Wanted Joseph to get out of jail? Yes. He's human like you and me. Yes. Why didn't Joseph ask God to take him out of jail? I think he asked. I think he wept. I think he prayed. And prayed like the Lord said to pray. I think he prayed right. With the right motives. With the right attitude. With reverence. And everything you want to put it on. Because to the best of my abilities. As weak as I am. I've done that. But it is not when I say so. It's not when the little baby says, I want to. It's when the father says, it is time. Very important. Joseph's prison in Egypt became the classroom. was the place where God met with him to teach him in stillness, in silence, to make him ready to lead him for what was to come that God was going to do through him. It was for God himself. It was not for the riches of Egypt. In that jail cell or cave, whatever it was, God was creating. God was molding. And he was transforming Joseph's character. Just like he does in our jails, which are different. To some, our cells are loneliness. Our cells are health issues. Our uh, financial issues family issues but yet we can come together and say God has been with me mm -hmm. but I still have the problems I'm still in the same spot but God has been with me what does that tell me that he is faithful but what is this also saying he's trying to get me understand that he is faithful to himself he is who he is we are not forgotten we are not pushed aside. We are not just pushed over. He is doing something. The Father cannot deny the Son because, the, uh, because of Christ. We stand in His love. We have to identify, and I'm sure you have identified by now, if the Spirit has spoken to you, your jail cells, or your cells, or your caves. Is God with you? Do you have the proof that He's with you? There is, a, in a way, a call. The Bible tells us it's a call to faithfulness. But it's not like I'm trying to be faithful. It's like He's working in me. That faithfulness is also called the perseverance of the saints. Trying to help us see it. Our very difficult circumstances are often, I like to say all the time, the very tool God is using us to teach us His character. Now, what I have, and uh, you know, and the reason to teach these things this way is because I suppose well, we are sheep. We just need repetition. We need to hear it. We need to see it. And then later on, we have to experience it. And bit by bit, little by little, the Spirit is gonna continue helping us. This is not something I learned. This is these are these are uh, uh, thoughts that have been. Uh, uh, cultivated in me through the years that have led me to this picture the only thing the thing that the Lord has done is allowed me to put it in, 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 a, in, a, in a picture, in a format in a form which it can be shared What's, what was God's plan we would, we would think to fulfill the dream he gave to Joseph um, or to show himself faithful because a lot of times we just get caught up with his dreams, you know, his dreams. And he had his dream when he was little. And then later on, his brothers fall at his feet and he see, ta-da! You know? And we see that because a lot of times we're just self-centered and we want to see things, you know, what God's going to do for me. We're not, not looking at, how, what can I do for God? 
What endurance can I take for God? We, we, we just That's not normal because that's the spiritual mindset. And so, it is obvious he was to show himself faithful because the Lord, he don't struggle, but I struggle. He has to repeat these things to show that, help me open my eyes, to help me understand that he is faithful, not just with my head, because I already know him here. Nobody can take that away. But here, in my daily life, it's difficult. What I experience is difficult. That's why what Joseph said it this way by faith. Joseph, when he died, who cares? You're already dying. You're going to the true home. But he said, but his men mentioned of the departure of the children of Israel and gave a commandment concerning his bones. He laid instructions. He made them swear to take his bones with them. But when they come out of Israel, then just directly going to the desert, they have to do a detour. Get the bones and then go back. And so, it's very important because in a way, his dream, he left his dream with others. Going back home. Joseph was not known for his organization skill or success in business strategies, especially in Egypt, as the second in command. But because God was with him, even Pharaoh said, on whose, why, on whose God is with them, who, like this guy, God is with this guy. Who else do we need to put on, on, on charge of everything else? Even the world recognizes that. And so, do others, and I desire that others may know that about me. The Lord is with me. Because that's what we see. Others knew about Joseph. It's not that Joseph knew specifically, but that others knew. Um, Potiphar knew about it. That we have the recorded words of the, of the keeper of the prison who knew about it. And Potiphar and, and the king of Egypt knew about it as well. So others knew this testimony. When we get close to God, we are going to dream. It is normal. We have dreams that he has placed in our hearts. We have to trust our dreams to God. That has been one of the difficult things that I have encountered in my short spiritual life, having to crucify my dreams. Mm -hmm. and just totally have nothing. It has been very difficult, but it has been very prosperous too. Joseph wanted to go back home. You go with me, Genesis 50, verse 24. Genesis 50, verse 24. 50, verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of his hand unto the land which he. Which he Swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones from him. We can think of Elijah, we can think of Jeremiah, or Isaiah, or the apostles, the sheep, the children of God. And we can see in the scriptures, even we know that Abraham, uh, the father of faith, he doubted. <laughs> we see of Lot, the right, who vexed, his righteous soul, his contradictions. Sarah, the mother of faith, who also doubted. Um, we, we can have Moses, the meekest man of all the earth, lose his school, who lost his school more than once. Uh, we have these records, okay? Uh, like again, Hebrews 11, the whole of the faith of saints is more like the whole of faith of God. For that is the record of God's faithful character, the acts of God, not of the acts of God. Men, we are all little men with a great God. And so when we think of God being faithful to himself, we are thinking of theology. We are thinking of his character. And thinking of his character, who he is, that is what is going to help us in all these difficulties and trials. Because we are not going to be pulled out. We're just going to be shepherded through them. And that's when it's, this will speak to us. When in doubt, when in trial, difficulty, and emotional roller coasters, we will know that He brought us thus far. And to see where there is no way out. Our flesh will say, Well, it's because of your sin. Well, it's because you lack like of prayer, or your error, or your faults. Our spirit also will say, But God is faithful. Because of His character, not my faulty, weak, feeble character. If we believe not, yet, he 
he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. 2 Timothy 2.13 He cannot deny himself. That is the key. You know, why, his, why is God going to be faithful with us tomorrow? Because he cannot deny himself. He cannot do that. God's faithfulness, his presence is not seen in all going good in our lives. All the positives, no negatives, not in only success, only mountain top experiences. At times, those are our times of most blindness, actually. When we just fail more miserably, his faithfulness will shepherd us uh, through afflictions. He will give us the favor and the wisdom that we under, that we need to prick us, to see his character, the essence of who he is, to understand that he cannot deny himself. Knowing his character uh, is very important. And there are many qualities of his character, his holiness, his purity, his love, uh, uh, his wrath. There are many. We usually have that book by uh, W. Pink. The character, what is it? The, the attributes of God. The word is attributes. Attributes. And so, knowing that he, um, that he will be faithful, there's so many verses we can continue bringing, but we have to understand it's because his word is because his fame is because his reputation is because his name's sake. We can we have that repeated many times. The beauty of the Son, because of the beauty of, of, of Christ, even before him shines when he, as a loving father, looks at us and pities us in tenderness and gentleness and skillfulness. That's why the Bible also says in, in Hebrews 10, 23, uh, that would be the last place I turn in Hebrews 10, 23. In Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Then there is a parenthesis there. The reason for, for holding fast the profession of faith. For keeping faithful. Relying in his faithfulness. The parenthesis says, for he is faithful, the promise. He is faithful, the promise. Mm -hmm. The Lord was with Joseph. The Father cannot deny himself. If we believe not, yet he abideth we are unfaithful, he continues being faithful because he cannot deny himself. It depends on his character, not our character. And that has brought me out many pits, many holes in my spiritual life. When and they just didn't know I was there, and when I knew I was there, it was a, 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 a guidance to me to understand. I'm still in the circumstances, just like Joseph, but I see that God is with me. I see his presence. And that has done so much in my life to encourage me to just keep going. Keep going. Knowing that there's a time, there's a time, there's a purpose. And the Lord will fulfill it. Because he, the, the Father knows best. Dear Lord, we thank you for being good to us. We thank you, Father. Because I did not try to do what it was time for me to do. It was just for me to share the bread that you have uh, delivered from heaven. The counsel through the scriptures, the thought that is um, in there, threaded carefully in there, about your faithfulness, and that you will aid us as we continue to do. Lord, we want to go home. We yearn and long and long for, for home when the time is right. Well, it is not yet. There are lessons here. Help us, Lord, like Joseph, by faith. In the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the most wonderful thought that his faithfulness is not dependent upon our believing. That is a good thing. <laughs> If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. He is the faithful one. And uh, thank you for that wonderful sermon. Uh,
message about God's faithfulness. Now, next week, I'm going to be preaching on unbelieving believers. Amen. So, the, Amen. These, the messages kind of go hand in hand with each other. Amen. Unbelieving believers. Right. And, and I'm uh, looking forward to preaching that message for you uh, next week. And uh, I know the Lord will, will bless us in these things. I trust that all of you will have a good week. We're going to have some dinner now. And with that, we'll be dismissed. Thank you.